Welcome back to the Nick Hall Comedy Podcast. I am your host, Nick Hall. To the left of me. Josh Griffey. What up, peeps? How's it going? <laughs> How's it? You always you're always slow on the intro and it kinda I'm it's kinda pissing me off. Well I'm you? usually waiting for more grandiose entrance. You no, know, like no, a great theme song like pro wrestling. I can do a little triple H and <sighs> spit no, water. Everywhere. I don't have anything good to say about you. Well, so, you should. I mean, this I week, just, Team Griffey just clean and house. Uh, I don't, I don't Team Griffey, they, uh, hashtag. We, I we, got a, we got a big week. Uh, <laughs> of course, the new Kent Murphy is out. The uh, the pickoff moves. Yep. Um, and so that one's fun. Did a little PSA at the end of it. It was about, hard for Kent, though, I'm sure, because he's never been on first base. Well, it's not about Kent being on first base. It's about Kent actually doing pickoff moves from the pitcher's mound. Why not? But I you're right. That. It's it is. I'm hard just for saying, Kent. like it's hard he, if you've never been in that position. As well, a he's runner. never given up a base runner either. He, oh, that's true. I forgot about. Yeah, that. he's never the only the only base runners he's actually like technically given up are guys that he beaned on purpose. But then he goes and fights them before they get to first base and he gets kicked out of the game. So he's game never, called due to unruly right, violence. So, yeah. yeah. So he's never been like <laughs> on the mound with a base runner on. Yep. So. You know, even like in Saw, he threw three perfect games in slow pitch softball before. That's tough to which do. Which is, whoa. That's grown men playing a small children's game, like <laughs> a small girl's game. So it's hard to keep them off the bases. <clears throat> Kent's amazing. But check it out. Beyond that, we might as well talk about it. Well, I got a shout out if that's cool. Yeah, do your shout out first. I just, uh, I just went to Vegas uh, for my kid brother, Indiana Hoosier, represent. Uh, they had spring break, so he invited me out. Yeah, yeah. The okay. old man, you know, the old man in the sea there, just floating towards Vegas to uh, hang out with these kids. I got to shout all these little kids out I was with. Uh, we got Caitlin, Bree, Shannon, Abby, Charlie, Connor, Carl, Sean, Alex, Cameron, and of course, uh, Dustin Griffey, coolest little brother ever. Thanks, guys. It was a blast. Uh, I taught him some things. It's, I taught him some things. All of, every one of those little fucking kids better share our goddamn podcast. Now. They, they better be watching. Cause that was, that was long. I mean, that's look, I'll sell my soul for anybody who wants to sponsor this ad. I don't care. I don't care what the company is. Like if somebody's like, Hey, I'll give you five grand an episode. I'll be like, I'll fucking say anything. Yeah. I do. I do not care. I'll put it anywhere. I you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I have, like I have a price and I can be bought. And it's way lower than you'd imagine <laughs> yeah, it's for way both of lower. us. <laughs> but I was kind of like, I was kind of upset that I didn't go to uh, get to go to Vegas with you. Yeah. My mom came to town. Oh, Could have been good. For two days. So I, instead I just drove around LA pointing at landmarks like an asshole. The kids are crazy um, nowadays. They're different. Like they don't drink. Like yeah. it's weird. Cause they're like a different group of friends than we were. You know, they're all like fucking, trendy they seem like cool kids it was like uh, walking in on an episode of skins or some shit yeah they're all like worried about like dressing nice and like you know saving it up and i was like dude spring break you don't save it up man you burn it down like you sleep through finals <laughs> yeah. like that's what you do yeah that's weak i remember but, uh, you told me they uh the one kid was like it's on spring break and the kid was like i gotta go to bed early tonight yeah uh, no, one of the kids you, no, he wasn't with don't. us that much i won't call him out by name he knows who he is i can still smell oh. the puss what a weak little guy but no, he was like, yeah, he was going to see sights or some shit. Yeah. So he's like, he went to bed early to go see sights. I'm like, the only sights to see in Vegas are like forgettable. That's what they're there for. Yeah, you pretty drink. much. But that's what I told him. I was like, when I was in college, we drank like we didn't want to live. Yeah. Like they're drinking like to look cool for pictures with a drink <laughs> in their hand. You know what I mean? It's a very yeah. different world. <laughs> yeah, that's. But it was fun, man. I, I, I fell in love with all these little uh, little peoples, man. Like I would go to spring break with them once a week if I could. It was a great time. Yeah. and uh, Love you, kids. I remember one time. We went to we went to South Padre Island mm -hmm. for spring break, and first of all, we got somebody told us that when you because you have to go like down into Texas and you have to cross over this little bridge to get into South Padre, mm -hmm. and it's really close to the Mexican border. Yeah, and so somebody told us that they actually have border patrol there, so they're like, you know, if you have anything, just don't take it across that bridge. And so we were real nervous, and we had stuff. Um, that you're not supposed to have well, yeah, at the time. Break. And so we ate it all <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting a picture <laughs> and we got to the, we got to the bridge and there was fucking nobody there. So like our, the first 48 hours, I didn't sleep at all. We just yeah. like lay, I laid on the beach and got the worst suntan of my life and just got obliterated Had that before for yeah. about 30 hours straight. Couldn't see anything. But that's that's what spring break I is. Saw like the you don't go to spring get break. a blowjob from one girl. I, like people, I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's spring break. <laughs> but I remember kids being like, "We gotta get a nice hotel on spring break." Like, no, we don't. 
Like okay. I'm paying twenty bucks a night tops. Yeah, we better motley crew break. whatever room we end <laughs> yeah. up in. So it's like you're paying I'm not staying in that hotel at all. Like fuck it. Oh, I'm with you, dude. It's weird though, like uh, all the all the kids though. They were on this thing, Snapchat. Man, have you ever Snapchatted? Mm-mm. I had never even no. really seen one. I until have. I have the app. They like Snapchat each other, like when they're standing next to each other. Like it's crazy, but essentially, it's like you send a picture and it disappears after a couple seconds. So to me, I'm like, oh, that's just for for dicks and tits. You know, and yeah. they, they were like assuring me, like, "Oh, well, it goes away after ten seconds." Like, boom! I just screen grab that. I've got all the titties. Like, <laughs> yeah. I win. That's the thing. That's... Yeah, but they're like, "Well, the girl will know you did it," and I'm like, "So what? I got her tits on my phone. That's blackmail galore." <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Like, I still win. Yeah. There's like all kinds of things. I was like, if I was only one generation behind, like, uh, there's this tender drinking game. Yeah. It's Wait, like tender what? drinking game, but they only drink. All the kids were just drinking four locos a bunch. What's the tender drinking game? Cause I, well, I'll be like, honest, I mess around on Tinder. You mess around on Tinder, yeah, yeah. But uh, see, so yeah, essentially, they're all drinking these fucking four locos, like they're trying to get raped at prom, mm-hmm. like all of them, just like trash bags of tor- four locos everywhere. But apparently, you get on Tinder, and it's I guess it's like a fuck app, right? Like you're like, yeah, oh, fuck that girl. You send her a thing, yeah. So we got on this one guys, and like we sent this girl a message, right? And it was like jokingly, we're like, we're fucking with the right. It's like, hey, let's. Do you want to eat a slice of pizza? She sends this thing back, like. You know, no, I don't eat carbs. So then my buddy Charlie's like fucking scrolling through. He's like, yeah, right. This is not a body, a body built on vegetables. Like she was a stocky broad. <laughs> so then like he's texted her back and forth. I was just like, please, God. I was like, do me one favor and just send her the thing. <laughs> Does dick count as a carb? <laughs> and then she just replied, he's ugly. And it was over. But I was like, that was my like one thing on Tinder. Like I wanted to get on and join the drinking game, but I don't. You know, ne- my wife I've, would frown on that, I think. But. I've never met anybody on Tinder. Like, I've never actually gone never out plowed. with them. Yeah. But, so, like, I have this inbox full of all these matches, you know. And some of them are, like, legit matches. Where it's like, yeah, she's cute. Some of them are, like, when I'm drunk and I'm just swiping right. And then the next day, you're like, oh, f- yeah. fuck. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, God. I'm I gave her too like, much info. I, the one thing on Tinder is the girl never messages first. Like, I just keep waiting to have a girl message me. Because I want somebody to send me the, just, like, something terrible or, Power like, move. loony, you know? Because I want to use, like, I want material. I want to have something to laugh about. Yeah. And they well, fucking... even more than material, you want pussy. Like, well, yeah, too. Well, work. yeah, like, don't get me wrong. If, like, a hot girl is like, hey, you want to come over and fuck? I'd be like, yes, yes, I do. But I'm looking for something. Like, they none of them message first. It's bullshit. Weak. But what is it? It's swipe right means yes, and then there's the yeah. down. So it's like, a, Wait, no, I no, think no. the left drinking right. game is based on left and right. you have to guess what the person's going to say. Like, do they like the tender thing or not? And I was like, the game seems kind of pointless to me. Because like, if you were playing me, you'd just say, well, yeah, you always would say yes. So it's like, to me, it's a fuck app, right? You're just yeah. like trying to exponentially increase your math odds, right? So I'm swiping every girl to the side. Like, <laughs> yes, I like it. Sending her the message or whatever. Because then it's like... You know, then you like, even if it's like Uggos or like, you know, Andre the Giant looking broads. Yeah. You know, you got 600 to choose from, you know, it's like the best odds ever. You're like, I'll just whittle it down from there. <laughs> That's my theory, at least. <laughs> I don't, I don't really care for drinking games that much. I'm going to be honest with you. See, this was another, yeah, I was yeah. like, I didn't, like drinking games to me are like what gets you kind of drunk, like get you warmed up. Right. But like once you're drunk, like I just don't have time to like sit and. You know, it's like when you see people who are out for St. Paddy's, it's always the worst. They're like, hooray, like a reason to drink. And you're like, fuck, this is my fifth day of this week. I'm praying was, to forget. Like, I was Jesus. doing this either way, yeah. sweetheart. Oh, you need a reason to drink? Uh, That's cute. And it's the worst, too, because like, you go into the bars and it takes like a fucking hour to get a drink everywhere because everybody's wearing their stupid ass green shit. Look, I'm I'm not being a curmudgeon. I'm all I'm all for celebrating. Like I celebrate some pretty stupid shit sometimes. Yeah. But, but shit you make up. Like, I hate holiday yeah. drinking. I hate special occasion drinking. Uh, it just drives me insane. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk some sports. Sports. That's enough about Vegas. That was my shout out to the children. And we got at least, I don't even know, I read like a phone yeah, book you, of names. We got like maybe seven more listeners. That's almost, like a huge percentage. Yeah, it was almost like an Oscar speech for a second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> just like name off everybody. <laughs> uh, sports. 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 Let's talk about sports. Sports. So obviously we're going to talk about the tournament here in a second, but uh, let's get on to some baseball for for just a baseball minute. Baseball is back, baby. The, the the actual regular season technically started thirty first. Yeah. Well, it technically started it's opening day this yeah. this weekend because uh, the Dodgers and the uh, Diamondbacks went over and and I was uh, I watched a little bit of it because down know, in like, Australia. Yeah, down it was under, like real down. early at, and I was still up, but uh, <laughs> so last night. Three games into the season now, 
Mattingly is just he's just fucking had it <laughs> with, with Yasiel Puig. Yeah, like uh, normally I, it takes <laughs> at least like All Star break before so, it breaks down. You know, so, so Puig, at, Puig last night's game or today or whatever it fuck I don't know Australia time. I just don't know the last game of the series. <laughs> yeah, the right? last yeah. game. Puig gets thrown out on the bases a couple of times doing dumbass running. Shit that he does, like that's his thing. Like, well, he's fat now too. He came in like yeah, was, fifty pounds yeah, overweight. Yeah, I think it was like thirty. <laughs> so he gets thrown out of the bases, and then the ninth inning, the top of the ninth, he struck out, and then he then he said he like hurt his shoulder and he didn't go back out in the field for the bottom of the ninth. And after the game, they were interviewing Don Mattingly, and they were like, Don. What's wrong with Yasiel? And Mattingly was just like, he looked like the old drunk dad that just bailed his kid out of jail for the ninth time. Like, he was like, I don't know. He goes, every time that guy swings and misses, something hurts on him. It's some kind of injury. Yeah. He goes, it's his shoulder. It's his back. It's his neck. I don't know. Maybe they'll do an MRI. Yeah. He you pulled know? an ego. And the media is like, don't ask him about Puig yeah. anymore. <laughs> He's going to kill somebody. Puig's like, what would really happen if the blind side was real? You know what I mean? <laughs> like the guy takes in the ultra talented young kid. And then all of a sudden he's like, this is a terrible move. Like this kid's a real piece of trash. Like I hate his guts. It's like, and we didn't even win in the playoffs last year. So what are we really doing? Here this <laughs> but I was thinking about it and, and, uh, if that's true, like if he fakes injury every time he swings and misses or strikes out, I think that's fucking brilliant. He might be looking at a ton of strikeouts this year too, so Mattingly's <laughs> gonna be like ripping hair out. Yeah, <laughs> but like I, I'll admit, I kind of did that when I was younger. Like when you do bad, when I used to do bad shit in sports, I'd it's always be face like, ghost. I'd always be like, oh, I'd come up lame or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I would have had it, but I've, you know, this. yeah. But if you, like when I played baseball, it was always uh. Like, the only reason I've ever really done anything in my life was to try to get laid. Yeah. Like, anything productive get some stink, I've yeah. ever done. Has it, so, like, when you're, you know, when I was in high school, like, nobody knows your stats. Like, I, I, I was, like, <laughs> right. a pretty good player, but, like, I, I invite a bit girl out to the game. Like, she doesn't know the difference. So, I like, I have that one game to try to impress this girl and better. Right? Right. Well, in baseball, you can go over four... <laughs> 40 times in a season and still yeah. have a great season. She doesn't know that. Or you that. go like 0 for 1 with so three if, walks. Right. So if like, I'm having that game, game and I got this girl in the stands, if I fucking strike out, I'm oh, I'm pulling myself yeah. out of the game. Trying then, to get some sympathy, Yeah, rub. then you get a sympathy. <laughs> you know, Then she doesn't know that you suck. You oh, just, baby, my back hurts so bad. <laughs> you get the sympathy rub down. And, and <laughs> I, think, I think Puig is just playing strategy. He's playing the numbers game at this point. Puig has enough money and notoriety now that he can move on with his life. Like, I don't think he needs to still be... Do you think he's still well, trying did, to did, trick did, women? Like, he might I mean, be. come on, dude. He might be. He's trying to save face on something. I think just because he's like, he touts himself as like the next phenom. And of course, everyone in LA bought in and they love it. And I think he's a great player, but like, I mean, I think the chance of him being like a Mike Trout are slim to none. So I think it's one of those. He's like bought into his own hype. And like, yeah. now, it's hard for a guy like that to swallow like, you know, failures of any kind. Especially when, like you said, he gets himself in so many like, he has kind of a Sosa flair about him where like just makes really weird, like bad airs for no reason. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> And I think it's his, like, delusion of, like, being unable... Because they say he's, like, one of the most uncoachable players. I believe it. You know what I mean? Well, he so doesn't think, speak a lick of English. Well, yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, that, but they, Dodgers have that on lockdown, I'm sure. But the problem is that, like, a guy like that, they're, like, giving him... Like, maybe you did this wrong. He's like, perhaps the baseball is oblong. I don't know why he's Russian. <laughs> yeah. Can we do an impression counter? That's the first impression of the show. Is his name Boris, please? <laughs> Hello, I would like to take your Crimea and steal second as well. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I like. I like. I can't even do it. I like yeah. baseball. I love the baseball. Baseball. I just always think of Boris from fucking Goldeneye with the pen click. What if that's just Puig and the pen is just him clicking his own stats the whole time? That'd Could be cool. Be. Well, he fucking he hit like a <laughs> he hit like a just like a single eye single through the infield. And last night, yesterday, and he just was like, fuck it, I'm going for two. Right. Like, he just gets the first and just fucking does. It's like you're playing a video game right. with the dude. We're just like, fuck it. Where dude, you just I'm accidentally press it. Like, oh. You just start mashing X, and he just keeps going. I used going. to do that in Ken Griffey Jr. because my thumbs are fat. I'd hit, like, go to second. I'm just like, no, what are you doing? He does not care. Call dude. that the Puig from now. He'll, he'll run But no, in. you know what he's doing, though? He's running the extra because he's like, well, I don't care if I get thrown out early in the season. He's got to drop those LBs, man. He's got to drop he's those He's getting LBs. his workout on in-game. Yeah, exactly. Shit. It's like he's almost a Heath Bell if he doesn't keep running. <laughs> like, he could be in some serious trouble. Oh, man. 
I don't know. Like uh, last year, there was like the, the big uproar about him, and it's all the old school guys. It's yeah. it's always the old school fucking baseball guys that are like, he's disrespecting the game. He's playing it the wrong way. Right? Why? Because he because he got thrown on the base pads a few times. Like, you know, yeah. like just because he doesn't play the game the way you read it from a book right. written in nineteen twenty. Oh yeah, they don't play it like back when they didn't have fences and <laughs> yeah, shit. That's like, weird. No, I mean, I've never break. been... He doesn't take a play off. It's not like he's loafing out there. No, I mean, that, if so, anything, he tries too hard. Right. Like, he takes, like, the easy should, like, get it and hold the guy to a single and, like, yeah, dives in. he's not and lollygagging in and out of the dugout. No. Lollygagging. He's not I mean, if anything, shit. yes, he's, like, immature and maybe slightly dumb. Right. And, I, like, that's... But, I mean, any kid would be at that age. Like, if you're that talented and then you come from a place like he did, get all this money, like, yeah, you might blow it a little bit. Like, yeah. Whatever. But, like, I don't know. Are you excited? I'm excited for replay in baseball this well, year. Well, plus, like, he's got Mattingly as a coach. Right. The, du- the Donnie dude, Baseball. Donnie yeah. Baseball, who, <laughs> who at one time, he doesn't anymore because he bitched out, but at one time sported one of the best mustaches right. in all of sports. We heard he said he can't do it anymore because he saw the gray in it and it I made know. him depressed. But, like, before Puig got on the team, Puig, Puig was probably looking at Mattingly's old baseball cards and thinking, this guy parties. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, so he's like, Only reason to have a mustache like, like that is to hide more blue. He's like, I'm going ham. <laughs> I'm going ham for this guy and his mustache. <laughs> Just cigars and Coke every day. That's what those mustaches are for, my friend. So, I don't know. It's... I, I the like traditionalists it. are on their way out, though, because, like, a lot of the kids coming up so, like man. the Puig Flair. We have replay now. They need like, to get them out of the... Everything f- is changing oh. to, like, modernize baseball, and it's, it's all for the better. It's all those same guys that just fucking quote books from 1912 all the time. Right. That are voting that for the Hall of Fame. Too, it's, and, like, the same thing. Like, right. every sport is modernizing, and baseball, I think, is going for the better. Like, it's not like football, Absolutely. where they're trying to turn it into powder And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fairly... Fairly well versed baseball historian. I, I played my whole life. Like I've been watching it yep. my entire Very life. Knowledgeable. I'll I watched like 120 games. Like so, I get the history, and I and I'm I'm for tradition, and I'm for these things. But at some point, like some sh- baseball has a million different things right. that are like these unspoken rules, and some of them I get. I have the whole book, the unwritten right. rules and, of baseball. And, yeah, it's a fascinating the unwritten read. rules, and and you know some of them make sense, and some of them are just like okay. Fucking like, yeah. if like digging your cleats in, it's like, yeah, come on, like, dude. Let, like, you gotta let it go, dude. <laughs> you know, like I get it. If, if you bean somebody, most likely you're going to get hit back or right. the next time you, you guys know, it's play, it's somebody's never like the right guy that gets hit. Like right. these traditions, they're so like, weird and they're not levied out. Properly. Right. But like, I get that one. I get that one as far as like keeping the balance and retaliation right. and shit like that. Some of those rules are cool, but some of it is just. Dude, let it go. Yeah. He, oh, he stepped on the fucking baseline when he but ran this out the to the field. That's the other thing. Go to Sorry. Dodger Stadium and <laughs> you know, look at... Like, I mean, correction, don't go to Dodger Stadium. Please, God, don't go. But watch it on TV, <laughs> the only way you should ever yeah. see Dodger Stadium. And look at whose jersey all those kids are wearing, man. Like, they're wearing the Puig jersey. Yeah. Because they'd rather be him than boring ass oh, the old Dodgers, Aegon, you know what the, I mean? The front office loves him. The dude sold fu- yeah. way more tickets than anybody well, plus else Plus, he's bringing him that year. huge international base, man. The yeah. guy's killing it. So... Anyway, that's fat Puig. An, it's enough Hashtag Puig talk. Fat Puig. We we uh <laughs> today we're gonna break down um hard to kill. I almost forgot the title. We almost gonna, forgot our. We're, no, we're gonna get to that. I just okay. but before we do that, we have so much show. Uh, we're gonna it's a big ta- week. We gotta talk about the tourney. I mean, Jesus God, it's the gotta it's talk the about tourney the tournament. week. So. Uh, craziness. This is where I do all my shout outs to hashtag Team Griffey. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> so first, I think actually we have one guy in the top five. Uh. Fuck queer, fuck queer. What? No. Okay. Fuck queer. So first of all, thanks to everybody that signed up. We actually got a pretty good turnout. Good turnout. For this thanks, tur- guys. For this Appreciate tournament it. challenge. Yeah. Um, right now, my bracket is uh, it has potential. I'm gonna say that I've got potential. <laughs> uh, I had a pretty mine, rough first round. I have most of my like I haven't lost any final fours. I have most of my elite eights, but like I'm I'm down near the bottom. Yeah. I'm tied for 16 right I've now. I've got six elite eights left. I've got all my final four, mm-hmm. and I've got obviously the the national champion Michigan. I've got them picked correctly. Ooh. I can't wait till I can't f- wait till our breaks. I have Michigan in the championship versus Florida. I can't <sighs> wait till we get to come down to that last game and Michigan loses. I can't wait I till can't Florida wait. eats shit next round. <laughs> You're out of in your the mind. Sweet 16, and, out of your and mind. like eighty percent of our our bracket. Oh, they're in just... one of the dumpster fire divisions oh. where all the good teams are losing. Oh, I don't know, but uh, we had a pretty good turnout. Way more of you fucking pick Team Griffey than I'm comfortable with. Team Griffey, I mean, we're fans uh, of numbers. We're I'll good tell at you, strategy. That really put my ego in check. I was yeah. 
You but think? I, after I saw three Team Griffiths, I almost hung myself. Hanged. I think it's hanged like myself. 60, 70 percent Team Griffiths. No, I, I don't think I, it's I think that we're much. coming out of the woodworks hired. The most important thing is. And also, is, you would know is that uh, besides Fauquier, 15, whatever his name is, only one Team Nick is in the top five. And oh, then whoever give it a second though, whoever dude. Fa Queer is with the leader, four picked, of the top five right now are Team Griffey. First of all, the leader picked the guy that's leading it right now, Jake G. He picked Kansas. Even if he falls out, so, there's just all these other Team Griffeys waiting to rise. And we had what we have. Oh, we only had. I thought we had more than one, but we had one person that look that Ohio picked, State. Well, <laughs> Ohio State. God, that made me happy. But we had one person that picked Wichita State. Ooh, that was um, a Team Griffey guy too. I know. That's yeah. a tough one. To Actually, defend. everybody that has a as a winner that's out is all on your fucking squad, bro. Are they? Uh, yeah. So yeah. no, there's a team Nick who had Wichita State. What a dope. But oh, is that team Nick? You it? Is. God damn it! <laughs> you oh. want to know though? We gotta I talk who's... about the biggest power move. What's that? Uh, I've always touted Team Griffey listeners as being smarter, strategic masterminds. Um, we're the team of intellect. You're more of the team of gut reaction. You're more of the. The, the crawl fisherman from Game of Thrones no. or Game of Arms. See, we're I, the intellects. A guy no. actually, uh, right down here, uh, M. Fivy, M. Fivey, whatever his name is. M. Yeah. Learn how to read. He, he is hashtag Team Nick Gr- and then dot, 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 so that Griffey can win. And he's actually won from last place. Let's just point. So he's bringing Griff, uh, Nick's odds down let's not and let helping the, Team Griffey with the overall. Let's not win. let this slide. You're like, we're the team intellect. And then you just fucking fail to be able to read right after that. M. Fivey. First. First I think all, that's Mikey Fornicoya, by the way. It could be. Because he has a Twins logo. Yeah, it's it's Mikey. But that's what I mean. M5 is not a real word. Yeah, like, but sorry, I mispronounced I'm, the I'm by though. far Team Intellect. But see, that is Team Intellect, though. Doing an intentionally bad bracket and attaching it to my nemesis, Nick, bringing his team down even lower than they are. No, that, helps well, that's Team just, Griffey ascend. That's just called playing like a bitch. No, that's called playing no, with the rules like, that are given. That's like playing like a bitch. That's what? like... <laughs> That's like that's like playing like LeBron, where you're just like every time somebody gets close to you, you're just right. Fall, it is playing you like just the fall best down player so in you the can league. get two free throws. The best player in the league, I'll take it. No, but I mean, yeah, but I'm saying like every time somebody's like, he's like, oh, and they're like oh, you, that's cool, LeBron. You play like a bitch. You have all you have the more talent than anybody in the world, but you still play like a bitch. But he like still that's, wins. That's that's what your team LeBron's is. LeBron's trying to be on Team Lord of the a, Rings, it's baby. A, it's a team bunch of, Lord of the Rings. It's a bunch of kids <laughs> that probably have a lot of talent and play like a bitch. I'll take my them. team. We play with honor. We play with respect. We play with brains. <laughs> you play and, with very low scores. Uh, just wait. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. That's all right. You can walk over to the house I've, of bitch and kiss the ring. I've baby. got the second most points still available mm-hmm. on there because I because I picked a, or the correct final four, and I picked the correct winner. Uh, but for the, for the dude that I mean for the dude that picked Wichita State, I mean I hope you went to Wichita State because it. There's He's no a team, Nick. Defend your team, dude. No one on my team would pick. Wichita if you went State. to, if you went to Wichita State, or even if you're like from the state of Kansas, Wichita, Kansas, yeah, they don't even know where the fuck they are. But, but like, Tom okay, might as well be in Russia. Okay, Ohio. I get that. Like, you live around Wichita. Okay, then I'm gonna let you off the hook. No but way. if you if you really like looked at Wichita and was, and were like, they're gonna win it all. Like that's that's adorable <laughs> because that's fu- that's just retarded. Yeah, they played Indiana State. They, they honestly might twice. as well have been playing me and you. The in a only pickup two game. teams, <laughs> the only two teams they played this year that were worth a damn. They played St. Louis and Tennessee, which are boy oh boy, and, Tennessee's an eleven yeah. seed. I mean, come on, like come on, yeah, we're thirty five. They and even no. got and don't uh, get me wrong, like running the table is not easy, no matter who you no, play. No, I mean so, like, it's impressive. Respect for that. And they but made you, a good tournament run. You last had year, to but... know when they went up against like a Kentucky or like Kentucky played Florida three times this yeah. year. Yeah. Like that, they, that's three games against one but team. Even, I mean, and this is not to like negate what they did. They played a good game, but you're like that. It almost looked like you were watching the flip. Like they were the. Un- My wife was sitting there cheering. She's like, "I love underdog stories." I'm like, "Well, yeah, they're and the that's fucking how, like, one seed. Like they're not an underdog." Right. Because then that, that's the thing. Like everyone's like, "Well, they went to the final four last year." Yeah, they yeah. did. When no one saw them because they in. were the underdog, yeah. and like it, it's it's that whole thing. But when you're the one seed and you're playing that schedule. Like everybody's stepping up to play you. Yeah, everybody. Oh, exactly. Everyone and wants to be the one that puts them back. There's no down way the they duplicate that. No, hell no, no way. But so, yeah, but Team Griff having a hell of a show and showing out. Baby. So I don't, I don't know who I who sucks is Bron- Bronin, 
But uh, it's okay. You don't have much I think much left in the clear. You didn't um, choose your side. Go ahead and just get at me on Twitter. You can just <laughs> say I'm I'm Team Griff. You can just join my team. It's over. North Carolina got gypped. No time on the clock. Uh, I don't know about that, man. That was pretty weak. I had them in the lead eight. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. <laughs> them and Kansas are the only ones that have bit me so far. I had Kansas looking pretty good. Wiggins had four uh, points today. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't play Hello, real well. Second pick. Didn't play real well. Gross. Um, my, God, my how good is my Michigan team looking right now? They, I mean, they're set, dude. Plus, they're like getting all the good teams cleared <laughs> yeah. out. Like they're yeah, gonna have to everybody's beat. Everybody's gone. What are they? The Dayton like frequent flyer miles well, and whoever the Louis, fuck else. Louisville's there. still left. Yeah, they're they're going up against Kentucky. Yeah. So, I mean, if you had to look at everyone left, Kentucky will give them a the game. I mean, yeah. Louisville, Kentucky might end up being the best game in the tournament just because of that that whole in state thing, yeah. the rivalry. And, All uh, the uh, the toothless cousin lovers are coming out for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I hate both of those teams with a passion. I mean, we just don't even need Kentucky uh, as far as I'm concerned. The yeah. state. Well, <laughs> my, cousin, my cousin is a gymnast for the University of Kentucky, so, like, don't blow up. When she, when, yeah, she's when, almost done. I just, you see how I did? Yeah. I just said, oh, she? Yeah. I wanted you to be like, him. <laughs> him. <laughs> hey, Brad. <laughs> yeah, him. Name's Rick. <laughs> Bench is 480. No, no. But, yeah, like, after that, then, you know, we can do whatever we want with Kentucky. Yeah, then we're out. Whatever. You know, but I do stand up for my family because I'm a good person. Yeah. So In Kentucky, they do a lot more for their family than stand up. You know what I mean? But here's, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it right now. By the end of this tournament, I'm going to pick, I'm going to power rank the top five here. Just looking at it. If you're listening to the podcast, get ready because your name's probably not going to get called unless you're on Team Nick. Obviously, my bracket, I'm going to end up number one. Uh, if you're looking at this on the web, you have to scroll way down to find Team Nick's guys. Okay. No, I'm, I'm ahead of you, idiot. Uh, <laughs> What's your bracket even called? Team, team, oh, Nick, Team Nick Hall. Oh, there it is. Jesus God. Human man, child? The what the hell? Of- H Manchild. It's Harvey Manchild. Yeah, right. It's an old internet persona. Was that your '90s Pearl Jam cover band? <laughs> no, it used to be my human child, I baby. Used, <laughs> I used to, no, I, I used to have a Yahoo chat yeah. as Harvey Manchild. It used to be like my online persona when I'd go fuck with people. Yeah. And I used to just really get on ESPN and fucking. Well, bash the only thing people. you're fucking up now is your bracket, buddy. Well, <laughs> the point is, my bracket's gonna end up number all right. one. All the team Floridas, we got this. Don't worry. And then worry. we're gonna go. Probably Fat Jesus is gonna end up second. Are you just I'm looking there. for the couple people that did Actually, you know like, what? It's going to be me, and then it's going to be Stephen G, and then Fat Jesus. That's going to be one, two, three. That's how the bracket's going to finish. The only Team Nick. Power it's, ranking it's the top three. It's just a wave of Team Griffey's up there in the top. Don't worry, buddy. And by the way, you guys, we're going to move on to this fucking movie. <clears throat> if we ever do a challenge again where we have to pick Team Nick and Team Griffey, and I get beat out by Team Griffey. You will. Boy. Team Griffey, we are a loyal, welcoming club. Boy, are we going to have problems. Team Nick is the Westboro Baptist Church of online Well, you guys need to start. Very exclusive. You guys need to start thinking, you people at home, you people. I mean that. See, I would never say you people. Start thinking about what the loser has to do. Start tweeting us some ideas. Yeah, what do you want to see Nick do on Hollywood Boulevard? For some public shaming. (laughs) All right, let's move on. Today, we're going to grade the... The great Steven Seagal. This is where I'm going to say you people. Where was the enthusiasm over picking the movie, peoples? We need more feedback. More of it. Anyway. More. So actually, Willow technically won by like by one voting by voting standards. By like one or two votes only. But we couldn't we couldn't get our hands on Willow quick enough, so we watched Hard to Kill today, and we're going to yeah. grade that. And uh, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. So let's kick this off. A little grade of Hard to Kill. First of all, it's a little action flick. Starring Steven Seagal himself. Yeah. Also, it has... New uh, listeners, this is perfect movie grading criteria. Yeah. It's my system with which to perfectly and more most accurately decide which movies are perfect. You hear a lot of people squabbling about what's the best movie, this and that. We're giving you the answer. We're giving you the formula. So Nick wanted Hard to Kill to get graded. You thought this was a contender. I Yeah, I still do. I'm still... After we just watched it, you're still saying it's him? Yeah, I'm still in delib... We're going to talk it out. Let's Let's talk talk it out. out. Convince me. So, first of all, let's just start from the beginning with this guy. Uh, Like, the movie starts out. Right. And he's uh, he's spying on Senator Trent. Yeah. At, like, the loading docks or whatever. Which we don't know he's Senator Trent yet. Spoiler. He's got, like, (laughs) he's got a gun with a camera mounted to it. Yeah. And then where the scope would be, he has like a shotgun mic. Yeah. Pointed out. And they're they're a good, I don't know, 200 yards away 15 from him. 15 feet away. <laughs> no, they're away. They're like, a, well, yeah, I guess. It doesn't look that far. 
But either way, like he's getting perfect audio from this thing. Yeah. Like, he's just crouched over and he. Except he's, for when he starts talking to himself, which would easily pop up on the tape. <laughs> yeah, right. Like they'd be listening yeah, to it in court, of, like, oh, this is the most important. So it goes like, <sighs> show me your face. It's dark. Damn it's it. Like, quit talking on your audio. That might be tape. the smoking gun that I missed. That's one of the smoking guns. Oh, shit. Right <laughs> in the first scene, there's goes, a smoking gun. He's like looking at him. He goes, who are you? Yeah. Get out of the shadow. Inadmissible. <laughs> Inadmissible. <laughs> leading the witness or whatever. And then he turns yeah. around. He's like, I'm Senator Trent. I thought yeah. this place was safe. Oh, me? Me? <laughs> me? Yeah, it's me. It's my master plan. Thanks. <laughs> also, what does oh. Seagull have in his hand that he keeps, he keeps dropping like a metal pipe on metal shelves? Like when he's trying to be stealthy, that's how the guys know to run well, over yeah, there and Well, yeah, he's like trying to change something out on the camera. And he hits, <laughs> he hits a little thing and everybody turns around. And he's still like halfway into the alley. And the guy's looking right at him, and they're like, where is he? Where did he? Where? I thought you said this dock was clean. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> and then Seagal, like. <laughs> it's, it's one of the bugaboos of this whole movie is the uh, It's the a bugaboo overly, of that entire genre, though. The overly foolish uh, villains, right? Like, the henchmen are usually, like, there's always the henchman problem of, like, they line up one at a time to get their ass beat rather than, like, all going at the same time. That kind of stuff I can deal with. This is, like really beyond foolish yeah and not only that he didn't even have one like tough like henchman like every henchman in the movie looked like you're out of shape like balding beer well, they drinking were all uncle. old guys uh yeah there wasn't like the one, one guy buff, like you know every action movie, yeah. they have like one like really buff who's like the head henchman. well they tried to make that one guy that that kept wearing the bolo ties like he was supposed to be the badass henchman right. he was just like this skinny old man with a yeah, with exactly. a fucking soul patch he just looked like a and trucker a, and a bolo tie yeah. and he was it's like, like a trucker plus chain smoking plus meth plus <laughs> bolo tie that's how i knew he was a bad guy yeah. so they started him off like that he might be a cop but he's a dirty cop yeah. it's like he just knew right away but it's like oh my god it's just it has some great seagull though there's a oh. lot of arm breaks yeah a lot well, of like, arm breaks because when he gets back to the house like right after that scene oh yeah and he's like hiding the camera and his wife yells down. She's like, what are you doing down there? And he's like, I'm just getting in the ice box. He goes, I gave up my diet for Lent. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, like, uh, he's got so many good lines. In who this who wrote that movie too, by the way, that they were still using ice box. Like well, when's the last time well, it called was an ice box? set in, it, it starts in 1983. It was set. Like in the same town as Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in L.A., idiot. Oh, yeah, that's right. L.A. Stupid. Represent. Yeah. What is that? L.A. So anyway, <laughs> so from there, like the henchmen come in and they blow, his, they blow, they shoot him like four times. And he's just. Well, this is where the movie gets his title. Right. Is the hench, this is the another smoking gun for me, right? They kick the door open and there's what? Three henchmen in the room. All of them have shotguns. Yeah. They fire a gun four feet. Well, they towards hit him. Seagull, and all they do is wing him in the shoulder. Well, they well the first one was like a buckshot or something, like it sprayed out. Still though, the spread right. on that would cover that whole right. room. <laughs> and then the next guy like shoots a real bullet into him. Right. Okay. And then his wife's like, Mason, and the guy's yeah, like, yeah, just screams. Good night, bitch. But this is and another thing they down. do in the movie is like the bad editing, where there's like guy who's just like sitting, and you could tell the director's like, <laughs> and he's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, bitch. <laughs> it like blows him away. And there's like a lot of like, aw- cause there's like the scene where Seagull's like laying on the bed and she looks at him, looks back at the guy. This is like seconds long. Yeah. And just goes, Mason! <laughs> Meanwhile, there's and then the guy guys like just this. is like, is she going to stop oh, yelling? Oh yeah, you're done yelling now? Your dramatic line? Die, bitch. Are you- and blows his wife Wait till she's done yelling. Don't fire her. Let her get the scream out. Like, <laughs> let her, come on. You know, it's her husband. So. It's pretty rough. <laughs> But, so uh, <laughs> anyway, so they so they do that. They blow his wife away. And Presumably then, and then, kill him. Yeah, supposedly They're like he's a huddled dead. mass on the And bed. then his kid walks down the hallway. Yeah, who so, looks like a young he's Josh like three or, He's like three or four yeah. years old. He walks down the hallway. The two like grown ass gunmen see him. And they just start fucking unloading just rounds of bullets at this kid. Oh, yeah. And he's like running down the hall. They knock his gay pride banner off the <laughs> yeah. ceiling. And the kid <laughs> jumps out the window. And they fucking... You know, they show like three or four more shots out of the gun, and it kind of looks like it might have hit the kid, and it kind of doesn't. Oh, it would have hit. Then, I mean, right? Yeah. But then, they, <laughs> but they just leave it at that. Like they don't yeah. show like a dead kid. Like, uh, but they, by they the way, can't. one of the henchmen is Hank from Breaking Bad. Yeah, Hank Schroeder. He's Schrader. In there. Schrader. Yeah. And the, and the hot the hot nurse, which we'll get to, from is Weird the chick Science. from Weird Science. She's a doctor, I think. I think, or no, or, is she the nurse? Whatever, yeah. nurse, doctor, same thing. All, they don't distinguish in the movie. They all just wear the white coat. Right. So that's the, so that's the set. Like basically, like his wife and his kid and him die at the beginning. Yeah. Or so you think. 
that he's being set up by dirty cops. <laughs> right. And so they get to the hospital and, and, uh, and the, the, the police, like one of the police chiefs is standing there and then like some of the dirty cops and some of the good ones. Right. And, uh, like the good best cops, friend cop. Right. Yeah. And, and this doctor just runs out and goes, Mason's dead. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then runs away. Yeah. Yeah. And the cop's like, damn it. And he starts pushing people against walls to talk to him. That's, see, that's why he's the best character. Because everything he says is ultra serious. Yeah. But, like, he doesn't talk to a character in the movie until the very end. He talks to the kid. Yeah. But, like, he doesn't talk to a character in the movie until he's like, listen here, pal. Yeah. Like, he gets him on the wall he and tough talks sh- him. And you're like, Jesus, like, that's your own mother. Like, what are you doing? Like, he's just tough talking everyone. Has like, the scene when him. the doctor's like, I know you're a cop, but this is my hospital. He's like, listen here, pal. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> you know? like, uh. We could learn a lot for our neck true detective skit just on that guy. Yeah. Like, he's so, got everything in one cop package. So the doctor runs out, and they're like, and he's like, Mason's dead. And they're like, oh, no. Well, then you find out that the good cops are behind this. Yeah. And, and so Steven Seagal is not really dead. It's an they're, elaborate ruse. They're yeah. saying that he's dead to do it. But he's like, he ends up slipping into a seven-year coma. Because that happens. Yeah. And he wakes up. This and th- who, who do you think's paying for that? So They pull the plug on there, his ass. If there is a smoking gun, it's like, it's in this, like, in this section. Of the movie, like when he's laying there in the coma. A lot of smoking guns. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, so he's like laying there, and and the one nurse shows up, fucking Kelly LeBrock, weird science chick. Yeah. And and like they make make it known right away that she just has a crush on this guy that's been sleeping for seven years. Yeah. Like for no reason. Yeah, for no reason. You know what's weird so, about her character though is how they always put her in like the ugliest, most cover like covering oh, yeah. clothes. Her outfits were terrible. Like, Not one we, titty shot. Yeah, no, no cleavage, no like leg shots, no nothing. nothing. Like the most useless hot chick yeah. side character. It was kind ever of a look down. Big so, time. Yeah. Especially so she, with Stegall's, like, he has the go-to, like, safe opening move in the movie. Like, every chick he makes out with her bangs, he goes straight to the, like, straight, side titty. Oh, like, yeah. Within a second of kissing him, he grabs their titties. Oh, yeah. High school locker, dude. He's yeah. just trying to figure out that kind. Con- <laughs> yeah, and not, like, his, on the nipple. Like, on the base. That's his move right yeah. there. <laughs> like, every chick, it's his only move. <laughs> and so, then every chick, their response move is just twirling the P-tail. <laughs> so, so the nurse, <laughs> so she goes over to him, and he's, like, still sleeping in his coma. <laughs> she, with a perfectly groomed goatee yeah 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 well we figured that out anyway yeah so she leans over the bed and she's like you're a sexy man like saying this shit and then she just lifts the sheet well, up and then, well first she first she goes she like pops down and she comes up and she goes do you want some pussy <laughs> and you're oh like, you're, like God, yeah. you're like is she gonna fuck is she gonna fuck this this like you thought she mostly was gonna dead kill body Bill her ass. and then she just holds up a cat and goes, I got you a cat. Yeah. And says it. And then the, that has nothing else to do. With, like the cat never comes. It's right. Just, it's just somebody on who set. Who let a cat in here? That's very unsanitary. Somebody on set that day was like, you know how sometimes cats are called pussies? Yeah. And then the guy was like, yeah. He goes, what if we wrote they it They had in? to hire a cat wrangler for that. <laughs> he goes, I got this great joke about where she's like, do you want pussy? And then gives her a cat. <laughs> and they're like, well, that doesn't make any sense in the script. He's like, damn it. Put it in there. Put it in. <laughs> I'm it, producing. probably Segal. He's like, I like that joke. <laughs> yeah, I like no, but she has the thing where you find out later, like, because the beard is supposed to show that time has passed. Yeah. So he has, like, this weird, like, really gross long beard, but it's only a goatee. And they never acknowledge that until, yeah. like, 30 minutes later, they throw in, like, a, hey, you've been shaving my beard, huh? Yeah. But it's like, well, after that's, a little, that's a little late. Like, after he's already it was shaved well it off. after the montage. Oh, yeah. Like, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> but this is the thing, right? She lifts up the blankets, like, checking out his dick, and she's, like, in love with him. Like, doing his goatee. Like, when she says the pussy line, you think, oh, this is a Kill Bill. Yeah. Like, she's going to pull out the giant tube of lube, you know, get herself greased up and be like, hey, what's up? My name's Chuck. I'm ready to fucks. Yeah. You know, she's going to drive the pussy wagon. I'm like, I've seen this. Like, this is where Kill, where uh, Tarantino stole this, right? But and then it's a be. cat joke. I was like, and not like a cat, like a little tiny kitten that just looks scared. It's a bullshit joke. Uh, uh. And then it's like by his face when he's having the seizures. Because, like, two seconds later, like, the pussy works. Like, they should try this in real science. They set a cat by his face, and, like, literally within 30 seconds, he has seizures where he remembers the attack, and then he just wakes up. Yeah. And he's like, (laughs) he's like, you got to get me out of here. Yeah. In the next hour, are we both dead? And she's like, okay, silly guy. Hilarious. I'll be back to suck yo's off. And they had to know because his chart was, like, listed as John Doe, and she knew that she had to contact somebody when when he woke up, but... Like when when he wakes up, this guy who's put in there by the police, 
and wakes up and is like, if we don't get out of here, we're going to die. And she's like, whatever. Right. I'm going to suck your dick first. Right. And that's then, what I mean. But the smoking gun to me was, if there is one, I don't know if there is yet. If we've already talked about like 50. <laughs> but when she, like when he wakes up, the, the police didn't put any plan in place for when old well, Mason the Storm one cop, wakes up. It was up. his friend. The only plan she had, she just calls the police station on Generic like anyone. on the random number. A new henchman that has never like, been seen. And she's and some cop answers and he's like, "Hey, hello." And she's like, "Yeah, it's Ma- Schrader. It's Hank Schrader." Yeah. yeah. And she's like, "Yeah, Mason Storm woke up." <laughs> and he's like, "All right, thanks. Uh, I won't tell nobody. Yeah. Promise." You know? And then it's like, like maybe he's called John Doe. Like maybe you shouldn't say his name. <laughs> like you know, he's mixing with dirty cops. Like it's fine. And she's like, "Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. I'm so glad I'll be going home." So she's like. It's, What's- is that bad? Should I not have but done here's that? The, here's the problem, right? It's like his friend, the wall pusher, like, you know, the <laughs> tough chief. You know, he goes through the whole ruse of uh, setting up all these funerals and deaths to, like, keep him alive. Except he never thinks about, like, oh, if this guy wakes up, I shouldn't leave my personal number. Yeah. Like, he's disappeared now because next time we see him, he's like a grizzled, like, I'll give up on the force. They're like, why? It's like, oh, my mom got in a car accident. It was really <laughs> yeah. tough on me. Like. You, like, expect, like, some great, like, I fought him to the tooth and nail. You know, they blew me away. Like, something. Like, he was hard to kill also. No, it's just, like, his mom had a car accident and he quit. Yeah. Just lame. But, I don't know. And then, you know, obviously the the great line. Well, he goes through the montage. We should t- stop and talk about All right, montage. let's talk about the montage. Because he wakes Cause up you, after. You have problems with it. To me, if anything, this is the worst moment in the movie. No way. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I am a montage machine. Like, I love any movie with a montage almost generically. Yeah, me too. This movie, because he's been in a coma for seven years, right? So he's got to learn how to bust ass so he can go get revenge. Like, now he's put it all together. He's got to go. he's got to get his strength back. It is the all-time worst and most fucking pathetic-looking training montage of all time. Like, there's this scene when he's just in the living room. He's like... Like, just the daintiest karate chops, like 50 of them. And then he's doing bench press with the bar. And he looks up, and there's just two newspaper articles. That's the only ones he could find, I guess. Like, he doesn't have pictures of his wife and son. He has two shitty clip-outs with no pictures of, like, cop's family killed, cop killed. And he looks at it and goes, <sighs> That's his motivation. And then it's back to the training. And then, this is the best part, though. That's my we favorite. Get, we get the, the Steven Seagal bad run. It's almost his trademark. Like, for as tough of a guy as he is... It looks like he's like a he's got like the T Rex run right like his arms are down anchored to the side and it's just well, all his, wrist. His, his his left arm just does this, but his right arm does this thing where he goes. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. Fucking every like stride. he's dribbling a tennis ball or something. Like it's unbelievable. Like for the toughest guy, and it's just him in like this really stupid looking track jacket, like running up a mountain. And you're just watching it. and You're like, I'm gonna fight that guy right now, just on principle. Like, any guy I saw run like that, like, I just want to fight him. Like, yeah, he's Steven Seagal, and he'll clean my clock. And then there's just a scene of him, like, trying to, like, punch wood. And, like, that's when you know it's over. Like, there's no getting better. He no. just punches the thing out of the ground. No, he puts the he puts the acupuncture needles in and lights up the fucking herbal smoke shit. Yeah, I forgot. He puts in three <clears throat> acupuncture needles. Like, that's fucking it. Like, no, he's got a ton of them. He's got, like, 20 There's, in. like, one in his bad fake scar. No, he's got, like, two. He's got two in the front, two in the back that have the smoke on them. But he had, like, a ton in his chest and his arms. Fucking come not on, enough. Man. Not enough. Not enough. Welcome unleash to the your real world. Dragon. Bullshit. But then, but, but they went to a second part of the mon. Like they broke it, and then they went back. They in. broke a montage. You never like, break a montage. And then he's like doing more bad. They broke shit. the montage. Stopped the song. Showed bullshit. <laughs> and then went back bullshit. to the montage of him punching this thing, and it falls off the ground. Because you're like, yeah, it's only anchored like four inches into the ground. No this log way. fell over. It's the worst. Like it's like think of any montage. Like I'd rather fight. John Cusack in that skiing movie <laughs> or not fight like him training to ski is tougher than Steven Seagal training to like take out dirty cops. Don't want to go on top of that mountain. Yet. Yeah. I mean, Rocky was like lifting his entire family in like a rickshaw and like cutting down trees with his teeth and carrying them on his shoulders. Like Steven Seagal is just running like a T-Rex. It looked like he was chasing Jeff Goldblum in a Jeep up the mountain. It was we're pathetic. Gonna, we gotta, we're going to put that video up. There's the montage of it's just Steven Seagal running in films. Oh, I put it up. It's on the Facebook. You can find it now. It's the funniest shit. It's it's unbearable. Like it, it makes him the worst action star ever. Like you can't believe it anymore. It's the best. I mean, so then, I mean, so thank like, God, all of his fights are literally people running into him and getting flipped. Right. Because he doesn't so, have to move. So basically, like where we're at, the nurse he gets out of the hospital with. You the forgot nurse. the most important thing. What? You remember how the training montage ends? 
Yeah, he's, he's doing the karate yeah, chops. The door opens. The door opens, and the girl, the doctor, now is just dressed like a slut, and she's like, "Thought you needed a break." And they just start fucking. And he goes straight and to the And in the, the background, he does go to the boob, but in the background, <laughs> he you can tell there's like, oh yeah, there's those two articles about his murdered wife. Yeah. He's there to avenge. He's got his wedding ring on. Yeah. And then he just wakes up and goes, <sighs> like as his ring is like shining from the juice of another woman. Yeah. Like now he feels bad about it. Yeah. Just a bad character, dude. No, he just, just a bad dude. You every anybody would have that kind of like. Some girl comes up, gets your dick hard, and you're like, yeah, let's fuck. And then when you get done fucking, your dick's not hard you anymore. You know who wouldn't? Me. And then you start I hope my thinking, wife's looking. Bullshit, dude. <laughs> like, you, start, you start thinking real yeah. after that, and then you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like, it's like fucking, it's like the remorse you feel after you jack off. It's the same thing. Never once felt remorse, oh, except for when I, accident, I accidentally jerked off uh, to the nun rape scene and <laughs> Bad Lieutenant. I felt pretty remorseful yeah, we over know. that. we know. That's the only time I felt bad we for J and O. So, any, okay, so the nurse... Takes him, you know, gets out of the hostel, has him here. Yeah. The montage happens and all that. And they fuck. And so next, you know, like he tough talks Senator Trent. He does the line that made my number one. To a one. blank TV. Yeah, to a blank TV where he's like, I'll take you to the bank, Senator yeah. Trent. The blood bank. So all that shit happens. And then, like, the, the one cop comes over and is like, glad you're back to normal, you know? And he's like, fuck yeah. And he takes his gun and just fucking unloads a clip onto, like, plants. Pottery. Someone yeah, just has pots. It's like pots <laughs> with dirt, but no plants. And then right after that, like, four henchmen show up and he's like, I don't have any fuck. And all of a sudden he just has ammo again. And he yeah. whips and he whips ass. But not enough. He and not only, that clip. not only did he have ammo again, he has a fucking smoke bomb that he throws. Yeah, just out of nowhere. It's like he puts on a leather coat and everything he wears is really tight. But you can everything see his tiny he does, junk. like he always smoke has the bomb. girl and they they like they keep running into the henchman and like the one where they're on the balcony. So they're on the balcony, the henchmen see him, they look up. And him and the girl just drop down below this railing, and the henchmen just keep firing above the railing. Just for, for like thirty seconds, they're just yeah. They don't fire at the wood panel that might be covering him. They fire where up. they're where they're a hundred percent laying down. Yeah, you know, like, it's like maybe it's an optical illusion. <laughs> they're like they'll stand up again. Yeah. You know? Oh, and he stands up. He's like, get it. It also has the great moment though, where every henchman they start firing, and rather than like a little kickback or like normal. Every guy does this move. <laughs> yeah. They just start like spraying well, then, the front of their gun well, wildly. They, they make it to the end of that railing and they stand up by the pillar. And the one guy just comes up behind him with a knife. This is the bad editing. <laughs> grabs him by the arm like this and just stands there. Sets the knife like on the leather <laughs> and freezes. So Seagull can be like, what? <laughs> and Michael Keaton is ass with one of these Batman punches. <sighs> it's, I, but then he, yeah, then they have like the terrible getaway scene in the Jeep. Yeah. And then... But then that's when the movie just kind of goes eight. Well, the, yeah, that's that's the, basically taking us to the ending, like the big yeah. finish, the big fight, or whatever. Yeah. On there, and and, and uh, the, my other favorite part that we forgot to mention at the beginning, beginning when he's in the liquor store, oh, and, yeah. he, and he fights off like the guys that are trying to, to rob the liquor store, and he gets down to the after last. they murder the owner. By the way, <laughs> yeah. like, he doesn't actually do a yeah. good cop job. He, they, he gets down to the last guy, and the guy's got a knife, and he goes, he goes. Oh, it's probably not. He's still holding the gun. He goes, it's probably not fair if I, mine's bigger than yours. So he sets the gun down and the guy's still holding the knife all fucking like shivering and shit. Yeah. And he goes, oh, you know, it's probably still not fair. He goes, let me get down on my knees. <laughs> and he gets down on his knees and looks at the guy and he goes, come get some. Yeah. <laughs> and the dude come, just. Come cut my heart out. <laughs> yeah. The guy runs over and he just goes, get it. And then snaps, snaps his leg <laughs> with like the Ken Shamrock like yeah. ankle lock. And then it cuts immediately to him outside signing paperwork and giving someone the wink. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so like it ends, he ends up fucking knocking off all the henchmen. Well, he ends up, he kills all the henchmen. Kills, his son's alive now. Right. His son's back. Gets his son his back. His partner gets murdered. They staged his son's death, he found out like an hour into the movie. Right. <laughs> you know, they're like, He oh. never has time though. Like he sees his son for the first time in seven years since he woke up from death. And what does he do? Yeah, just rubs his and hand. And like, he's like, I got one more takeout order. <laughs> and he runs to like the senator's house. Yeah. And it's like, hey, son, what's up? Yeah. And the son's just like, well, fuck. Like, I haven't had a dad my whole life. It's yeah. fine. Now. <laughs> so, you know. You know what's wrong with the ending, though, is what's... the Seagull murders are cool. But when he gets down to the last guy, he starts writing the cryptic messages on the wall. Yeah. It's like everywhere the henchman looks, it says, Fear of de- anticipation of death is worse than death. He wrote it on the toilet seat. And it's in like seat. pink fluorescent. Yeah. yeah. And then the guy like lifts up the toilet seat and it's like, 
I'm coming for you. <laughs> and like all these bad lines, you're like, first off, how the fuck did he know like where he's gonna run in the house? Secondly, where's he getting all these different color like fluorescent well, paint it's, pens? It's it's that's the last cop. It's not the center yet. Cause then he, right. Cause then the cop comes down the stairs and Seagull goes around the pillar. And like sneaks up, and then the guy's like looking around, and Seagull looks out, and he goes, "How's it feel knowing you're gonna die?" Yeah, and then he ducks in. It's like, "Got you, motherfucker!" <laughs> How does Seagull know you're gonna die? It's like the How's longest. How's it feel you know about to die? And, and he does. doesn't use it like to his advantage. Like if he did that, and then ran around the other side, and like got him from well, behind. The, the other thing, like he, when he breaks into that house, so like this this ending is it's like a 25 minute ending, like where he's just going through all these henchmen. And he's fucking kill like it's just Easily. murder. He's destroying L.A. Like he d- kills the West, and it's fucked up. Yeah. And he gets to this house where the senator is, and like the other three henchmen that have been on his trail since the beginning of the well, movie. First off, let's just- talk about this. The henchmen are doing nothing to help. Well, is this your point? Right. No. No. What I'm saying is, he when he breaks into the senator's house. Yeah. The guy with the bolo tie, fucking yeah. Hank, and and the other guy that have been. Basically, on his tail since the beginning. Right. We're just playing pool. Playing pool. Like, <laughs> and what's the senator doing? Seagull's wrecking the city. The senator's that. out back in the hot tub with some topless chick. <laughs> yeah. And they come out and they're like, hey, we think Steven Seagull's alive. He's going to come kill you. And he goes, oh, guess I'm not going to the ballet tonight. <laughs> and it's like, he goes, what the hell? Like, he wouldn't have anything He looks at the girl and like, he goes, we're not going to the ballet. Beat it. Yeah. <laughs> Get she, out. She's like, okay, I guess All I'll just right. go. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. But... In the end, you know, he gets his man, like, the tape's developed, like, he, he's right. exonerated. Gets his kid back. Because, like, he never thinks to do this, like, early enough in the movie, like, Right, you know? it's it, it's almost like, it's <laughs> almost like whoever whoever wrote The Fugitive right. saw this movie and was like, oh, I can do it, ju- this movie's, like, almost there, let me let me do it better. Yeah. Like, because it's kind of the same thing, where, like, this almost guy a bit of a has to prove his out. own, ends up having to prove his own innocence right. and, like, take the law in his own hands. Right. This whole, like, great chase. But that's the other weird thing is, like, even the good cop who tried to help him, like, never once was like, maybe you should, like, go through, like, some legal process. Right. Like, maybe he's, like, a really bad guy. Right. Like, there's just, there's, like, all these weird plot holes that don't add up just to get to, like, Steven Seagal, like, kind of. He just, like, that's what I do love about Seagal. He's got, like, the weirdest karate moves. I love how calm he is all the time when he just, yeah. he just he's just super badass all the yeah. time. He's just like, come get some. It's, it's a fun movie <laughs> to watch, but, like. Let's be honest. It does not deserve to be amongst the greats of the <sighs> perfect movies. I'm going to make... It's I'm gonna, a C minus. It's a C minus C, movie. See, I'm going to give it a, a high B plus. I'm almost going to put it in the A range. So bad. I agree with you. It doesn't quite get into the perfect pantheon, but it's pretty damn close. With just a minor amount of tweaking the nonsense yeah. of the villains. I mean, it's like, really close. It's close. It's, it's really close. It's way closer than the Power Rangers was. Oh, yeah, way closer. Last week. That's a movie I'd like to see, man. So, Seagull taking on Power Rangers. We got to get out of here. Um, but speaking of Power Rangers, don't we have to pick Zords real quick? Oh, yeah, before Tony Two Tone, a listener and friend, uh, asked us what Zords we would be. What would be your animal? Would you go prehistoric or would you go something modern and why? Um, yeah, I would. I mean, I'd probably go with like a chimp. A chimp? Yeah, dude. Chimps have that super strength. Retard strength. Yeah, the re- Chimps are as strong they, as human retards. That's incredible. They, they do. They have, they have full <laughs> retard strength where yeah. it's just like they don't care about anything. Yeah. They'll start bashing fucking. They'll, yeah, I want to be a chimp. Cool. Plus, then I still get to like walk on my feet. Walk on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and still, still have opposable thumbs. Yeah. And still po- potentially bang humans. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what my. I mean, oh, Chimp Zord. I think I'd rather just be like the human retard Zord. Like, I could be like, you know, so we'd both be have like old, the strongest Zords. You'd be an old man. Old man. I'd be the sloth Zord. You'd be old man strength. Oh, man. Yeah. What if I was an old retarded man? How strong is a retarded man if he makes it to old age? God, this is, this is insensitive as hell. I'm not comfortable. I'm just saying. I'm not insensitive. They're like superhumans. <laughs> like, they're so strong because they're retarded they and strong. old. They are strong. They are strong. That's what I'd be. The retarded old man Zord. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to stick with the chimp and I wouldn't even, not offend anyone. It'd be like when the Green Ranger came out and he had the Godzilla Zord. Like, I'd have to be my own thing because mine would be so powerful. Yeah. It would need no. Old other men animals. are pretty strong just on their own. Oh yeah, and then if you make them dumb, there's like that. But that's a real thing. The old man strength. Like, oh, it, it's you, definitely. If your a real Zord thing. was just like I'm a 75 year old man, you could whip anybody 50 years and younger. Yeah, and almost every animal. <laughs> yeah, pretty. Like, much. You'd be like I'm a dinosaur. I'd be like, don't care. All right. <laughs> so we got to get out of here. Michigan's probably still gonna win the whole damn thing. My bracket's gonna Team win Griffey, it all. Thanks for killing uh, my spring breakers. Hope you're listening. Hope you share it. Until next week. Bye. 
Adios. <lacht> <lacht>